whoever can receive this word, God is looking at us. He wants to bless somebody to be a soldier for him. Don't you know that when you have the truth, you are uh, the most important people this world has ever seen? You're more important than a president or a king. Because you know the way to eternity. You have an understanding, brethren, of the kingdom of God. You have a personal relationship with the creator. That's why I need time with those of us that have faith. Amen. When we're in the midst of storms and we're traveling on the road, sometimes people will call some of the elders and say, it's a bad storm out here. Y'all rebuke the storm. Sometimes the saints get together and they say, let's rebuke the storm. And you know the storm stop. The storm stop. Situations coming. People are very sick, not unto death. And you get together and you all say, let's call the elders and pray. We get together and we pray. And God does things. Why is that? Because you have a connection with the most high. What better neighbor to have than somebody that knows who Jesus is? But too many saints hide that. Oh, I'm here to tell you, young people that know, listen, there is no greater favor than having the favor of God. Yes, Lord. There is no greater insurance, an insurance that doesn't lie, to know that you're covered under every accident, incident, situation. And the premium has already been paid for life. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, Lord. Oh, but it's such an exciting, oh, what a joy. Somebody help me now. What a joy it is to walk in the miraculous, the supernatural, and you ain't dreaming of making this thing up because you know that God is alive and you see the reality of his power and his life in your life day to day. And to know that this God is looking at you. He's looking at some of you. He wants to recruit you into his purpose. Elijah, the great Elijah running from Jezebel. He said, Lord, I'm tired. I need to get out of here now. You got to do something. He said, oh man, get us to get on over there, up the road. And when he went up the road, there was another young man named Elijah. He was plowing with 12 oxen, yoke of oxen. He was uh, taking care of his daddy young. Just cutting the grass, you know, feeding oxen, plowing. Some of y'all get mad when I get out there and take care of young. <laughs> when they get up there, take trash out. Do some around the house. Listen, you better do some around the house because it could be that that day you're working around the house, God comes looking Come at you. Come on now. Yeah. This man will take care of the house. Preacher, throw a little box, strong man, pound it up. And all of a sudden, he hears something rumbling in the woods. <laughs> Somebody say, Bishop, he ain't no woods. Y'all even know I'm telling stories. <laughs> he came out of the woods. He came through the jungle. He came through the... <laughs> Oh man, young man, stop and look. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. The ball head preacher. Elijah. Could you imagine? Elijah looking at him. Oh my goodness. Elijah, look. Elijah. Hmm. God said, he's a gap filler. Ha! He took his mantle and he hit the boy with it. Boom! The boy dropped the ox and ran over and told his mama, he said, wait a minute, let me tell daddy and mama, I gotta go. He went and told his daddy and mama, I gotta go. Old daddy said, son, you can't leave the house like this. He said, man, Elijah has just made me a gap filler. Daddy said, go, son, and represent the God of the Most High God. And he went down in history as one of the most powerful mighty warriors. Soldiers for Christ that the world has never seen in this generation. And all we will be honored as the years to come, as the churches fall away, we will be honored to say that there's a group of people 
that are standing firm. Yeah. Not only do they preach it, but they can demonstrate what they're saying. Yes. These people appear to be real. We'd be honored if some of your names were in that group. <laughs> There's a call on this church. Yeah. I'm prophetic. Yeah. Yeah. There's a call on some of your children. There's a call on some of y'all. You see, the Holy Ghost told me to tell you. Okay, 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 okay. Now y'all judge this. I'll be perfect tonight. The Holy Ghost told me to tell y'all. Some of y'all been praying. You want to be used of the Lord. I want to be a vessel. Whatever it is you want me to do, do it. But you're praying because that's a good thing to pray. But what you don't know is be hurt. Oh, I feel a virtue. I said it's been hurt. So now your resume is in. Amen. And the Lord is going to hold you to it if you accept it. Because he's looking at us. Young and old. Preachers and prophets are like. You read that book and you think it's just a storyteller. The spirit of God is alive. Now, for those of you who really want to be used of God. And you know my words never fall to the ground. You really want to hear from God and be used of God. Humble yourself, empty yourself, let your will be done, and seek the Spirit of God. Let's see if your heart qualifies. Because God is looking here to raise up a mighty army. You young people, understand it. I received the Holy Ghost at eight, didn't know I had it. And then I started dreaming at nine, young people. If y'all can feel spirits, we have a fruit of the You can also feel the Holy Ghost. You should hear them testifying sometimes in chapel. We've got some young folks that's touched by God. And we're grateful. But the Holy Ghost can put some of y'all in a powerful position to represent the kingdom and his people in the time of need. Huh? Everything is fine. Everything is going on around. But every time this man comes by who represents the government, there's an old man that don't bow. He refused to bow. He don't bow to nobody but God, though he is a slave. But see, God knew that one day this ruler, who this old man refused to bow to, was going to kill them all. God knew that. <coughs> all things were together for the good. So then all of a sudden, the king had a big party, and he called his beautiful wife to come. She said, I'm not a display. I'm not coming. She didn't show up. And all the other rulers said, man, every wife in the, the province is going to act like that now. Get rid of her. He put her away. Get your new wife. Well, let's bring all the virgins. So the uncle had a daughter. Had a niece and said, listen, go get in line. But don't tell nobody you're Jewish. Just get in line. She got in line and was picked. She became queen. But one day, the ruler, whom the, the old man refused to bow to, got mad. And had the king sign a decree to kill all his people. And when the word got out, the old man started crying. And the niece came out and said, what's wrong? What's wrong? Uh, that fool Haman then had the king sign a decree to kill all the Jews. You need to do something. You know we can't go. If we go before the king without being summoned, we can die. And then he said, you never know, daughter, that you could be a gap filler. It could be that you were called to the kingdom for such a time as this. <laughs> a slave girl whom God had his eyes on because he knew what was coming and God picked you to be a blessing to the kingdom and to his people. A gap filler. And if you are a gap filler, God will be with you. She said, well, if I perish, let me perish. I'm going to see the king. Y'all know that story? Yeah. Esther went in and saved the people, didn't he? The Old and New Testament go hand in hand, you see. This scripture was written that we read in the New Testament based off the lives of the Old Testament. So then Esther has a right to say, you know what I found out? What's that niece that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to the church. Oh, ah! All things work together for the good. God wants to use you. God wants to strengthen you. God wants to encourage you. 
And not necessarily to be some great one, but he wants you to be all you can be in Christ and in life. He doesn't want you down on yourself. He doesn't want you feeling like you can't make it. No matter what you do, all things go. God wants you to walk in joy and power and strength and have peace of mind. Not just based on the things you may obtain or have or not have, but he wants you to be at peace with him and with yourself. He wants you to be all you can be in Christ and in life according to your abilities and his blessing. You're important to God. Why do you think when you keep sinning sometimes he just don't wipe you out? Because he loves you. He's trying to say, come on, we can do this again. And we give up on ourselves before God gives up on us. He encourages us not to give up on ourselves. Why? Because he knows the power of his blood. Somebody say, what's your name?
And many times I've learned through the Holy Spirit. I can righteously judge me and discern your actions simply by a word you may speak or an act you may do. I look at the fruit of it. The fact that, jump, that, that, that Gideon got up and decided to go across the enemy lines, uh -huh. what did it show, church? Faith. That faith was building up. <coughs> but he went. And God was trying to teach him. When you petition me, it's in my hands. It's up to me to work it out. You just be ready to obey when I tell you. And he also tried to show you that your blessings don't always come the way you think they ought to. Sometimes they, they, your blessings are in the most unusual places. And that's where you have to trust in God. But sometimes you got to do what? Go across the enemy line. And you see the blessing. Which will encourage you to do what? What? Overcome. Because you know what's on the other side. And the Bible says, case in point, Jesus humbled himself and endured you know, the, the afflictions of the cross because of the glory that he saw that was coming. The resurrection. Oh, they crying and they spitting at him, but Jesus was looking at the resurrection. No cross, no resurrection. It ain't over yet. And God's timing is, please say perfect. Even though it's three hours late, please say perfect. Gideon got up in the middle of the night and they snuck down there. Nobody stopped him because God was with him. And he went behind, not any tent, but a certain tent. You see, God woke him up because there was a meeting night there talking to a friend. You know, I had a dream. I had a dream there was a big tumbleweed coming and it kept coming and it knocked down all my tents. And the other man said, that's the sword of Gideon and the Lord. Just so happened when God woke Gideon up, got his servant, going across the end of the line. Just so happened an enemy was having a dream. It just so happened they interpreted not using any name but Gideon's name. It just so happened that of all the tents, he ended up at that tent. Yes. All things were together for the good. Yes. To them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Yes. Ain't no incidents and accidents and, 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 and luck in Christ Jesus. All of his promises are yea, yea. Yes. Yes. And when Gideon heard that, he probably whooped the whole camp up running back. He figured they can't touch me now. He went back. And came back with a victory. Because God convinced him that God was doing what? Looking at him. People stop acting like Jesus is dead. There's still scriptures to be fulfilled. There's still souls to be won. He is looking. I, I'm not talking to y'all that can't wait to go home and watch TV. <laughs> Who can have believe yourself, but the Holy Ghost spoke to me. There's somebody here. God is looking at Tabernacle. He wants to plant a seed of strength in some of y'all's hearts to make you some of the strongest saints of God this generation has ever seen. Stop acting like Jesus is dead. He's still looking for people. He's still alive. Why do you think people still growing up and saying, I feel a call to preach? Uh -huh. Because he's still looking yes, for Lord. people. Yes, Thank you, I, I feel a virtue. Yes, Thank you, I feel an anointing. Yes. Somebody received what I just said. You, Why do you think you prophetess and you young men and you young women have dreams and sometimes they come to pass. He said, your, he said, your sons and your daughters shall dream dreams and they shall prophesy. And your young men shall dream dreams and your old men shall, uh, uh, young men shall prophesy, old men shall uh, prophesy. You understand what I'm saying? But understand what I'm saying. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. They shall see in the future. They begin. How many of our children have seen things that come to pass? They got the Holy Ghost. Why would they say it? He's looking. No, sir, get mad at me. No, sir, I don't want a Michael Jordan. I don't want a dead rice. 
I sure don't want no OJ. <laughs> no. Nah. What you want? I don't want no Muhammad Ali. I want someone with the spirit of Elijah. Yeah. Someone with the weakness of Job, of Moses, and the patience of Job. I want somebody full of the Holy Ghost. Someone that God can use to help turn this world around. I want somebody whose name is written in the kingdom of heaven. I want a John the Baptist that the Holy Ghost is upon him and touched him from a child. By that I want a murderer that can lead a multitude across the Red Sea with a shout. I want a healer who can understand the word of God. I want to marry that Father Christ all the way to the grave and then proclaim he's alive. Yeah. I saw the woman I see to that the I want a kid that when I fall sick and ain't my time, they can pray for me and I get up. Come on now. Yes. I want a child that's covered by the blood who's been called according to the purpose. On the way to college, and there's a massive spray, and all of a sudden they miraculously get out of the way because they've been called according to the purpose. Yeah. Yeah. I want children that know him. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that? Because that's their sure way that I'll see him again in the kingdom. God, okay, okay. The Lord is looking for. <laughs> Recruits in here. Stop acting like Jesus is dead. When you figure, we have we have several business people here. We have people in our places here, y'all you know. So when you get through with all the motivations, well, what are your plans for the next five years? What are your plans for the next ten years? And you want to invest whereby you can get the best benefits out of it. The American dream, you know. Look, look, look at the result. You can live like this. Look at this. See that? Oh, all this can be yours. Yeah, but sir, can I ask you a question? Yeah, what is it, young man? What good is all this if it's not going to last? So that's not the purpose of this conference. Uh, all right. Okay, but use the word with no reason. Okay, fine. So while you are planning my business, brothers and sisters, and while you're looking at the blessings of the corporations and then you're planning, don't forget to leave out what's most important. What's that? You're planning with God. Now God, this is what I got, but what do you say? What can I do for you? Meaning, what can I yield myself for you to do through me? Anybody ever? Lord, what is it that you want me to do? Now, if you have uh, been blessed of God to work in business, don't you know you could have been placed in that business situation for such a time as this? Yes. There could be somebody in that arena that God wants and you don't want to get them. Yes. Don't ever go to why and leave your Jesus behind. Yes, Lord. Ah! Because they'll walk into a big executive room and they'll look, my God, because you don't know what they've been praying. God heard me. They'll come to you and say, I know God sent you to me. You scratching your head. What, way up here? Yeah, but God is higher than I am. Stop being afraid, all my business people. Stop being afraid. Let your light so shine. Why they're taking care of that business, you give them to see them what's do here. Take time out to take care of your father's business too. Act like God is alive. Stop being ashamed. Stop being afraid. Holy Ghost, we have a call. You don't go to revolutionary war. They send people out for militia. The South Carolina, you've been called up to the militia. North Carolina, you've been called up to the militia. Virginia, you've been called up to the militia. Now I'm telling you in the war of the Lord. Stop it off the baby, you've been called up for the militia. You have been called to war. God is looking for soldiers. God is looking for somebody that's real. God is holy. And our weaponry is not called. Got M16? No. Suzuki? No. How y'all gonna fight? Our weapons are powerful. To the pull it down the struggle. 
against their enemy. And there's no weapon formed against this army. Yeah. That should, should prosper. Am I making sense? Yes, sir. Now my spirit is speaking louder than my voice. Because I'm screaming it out. But my spirit is really saying very kindly. You know my words never fall. God is really, he told me to encourage those of you that will. Because all y'all ain't going to heaven. Don't think of you sitting you're going to heaven. If you die right now, some of you are going right to hell. You ain't got to go. But you can go. But he told me to encourage those that will receive it, young and old. You young people from age up. You middle age, you older people. He told me to tell you, tell them. He wants you to be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might, he will back you. God told me to encourage you to get on fire for God. Because he is looking at us. And he wants to use some of you for his very purpose. And if you are those he's looking at and he accepts, and you accept, your whole life is going to begin to take a shift. All kind of weird things are going to start happening. Because you're going to start walking in the miraculous. You're going to start feeling things, seeing things, knowing things. You ain't going to know, brother, you ain't going to know what's going on. Mm. Because you answered the call. Yes. And he doesn't send you out and don't prepare you. That's right. Now the Muslims will get mad at this. The Quran means the recital. Muhammad didn't write the Quran. But the Quran is put together by followers who found different messages of his writings written on this, written on that, and they put it all together and they put it in the book. But it was said that while in the mountains, the angel Gabriel came to him, the same Gabriel that came to Jesus, and told him to write. But Muhammad was illiterate. He couldn't write. Now, I find it amazing that the father of the so-called Muslim religion married a woman that had the name of the Hebrew God. He married an older woman who was a merchant, a very rich woman. He learned to trade. He came from a very powerful clan. Her name was Kadeja, Yah, named after Israel. But her uncle was learned in the scriptures. Muhammad was influenced by the Jews and by her uncle. And that's when he decided to get away with all the many gods and keep just the one. But he would go into a trance or have an epileptic fit and come out. And he said Gabriel told him to write, but he never did write. And so it went down to history as he was the prophet that was told to write, but he didn't write because he was illiterate. Now, to them, that's all right. But to God, he would be considered a disobedient prophet. Because when God takes you do something, you do it. But it also shows that his God was not equipped to prepare him. If God told you to write, you couldn't. He's made provisions for you to learn how to write. That's right. Told Moses to speak. Moses said, I can't talk. He said, I tell you what, you got a brother that can. That's right. So you talk to him and he'll talk for you, but you're going to talk. <laughs> so the disciples, go ahead and pray. What are we going to do? He said, I give you power. Yes. Our God equips us. That's right. Oh, we need some real men of God that ain't afraid to stand up. Yes. Right. Ain't got to get ugly. Ain't got to get mean. Young brothers, it's got to be real. Right. Young Davids. Young Jeremiah's. Young Daniel. Oh, son, we need some disciples. We need some witnesses. And listen, well, Bishop, I don't feel like I'm a prophetess. I don't feel like, you know, this and that. Listen, you can be an anointed housekeeper that blesses that house. Mm. How was the battle? The battle was good. Did you win? Oh, you know we never lose a battle. We're very powerful. Ah. Somebody say, what you doing, man? What you doing? I'm acting. I'm taking off my helmet. <laughs> See,
See if you know the Bible. Who am I? Take it off my arm. Yeah. Uh, oh, all this stuff smells. Give me the alcohol, baby. I win all these battles, but boy, my skin is all messed up. You're such a great king. You're such a great ruler. You're the king's right hand man. What, what a slave girl. Call the little Hebrew girl over in the corner. Uh, excuse me, sir. I'm just a poor old Hebrew slave girl. But I serve a mighty and powerful God. You know you ain't got to live like that. Uh -huh. huh? Yeah. You don't have to live like that. Huh? Yeah. There's a God in this room. Yeah. And that's a prophet. Yeah. yeah! I might be a housekeeper, but sir, I got an anointing to bring to your house. Yeah. I got a God that can fix the situation. And he went. Y'all know the story, don't you? That's right. He came back clean, don't he? How do you think he treated the Hebrew girl when he got back? <laughs> oh, my God. You know what he thought? That's the best thing that ever could have happened to my house, to bring that housekeeper in, who knew God. God is with you. Ain't you tired of being caught up in arguments, frustrations, flesh, this and that, 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 when you can really enjoy the power of God? <laughs> All I'm trying to say, if I'm making sense, God is looking for some of you all. He wants to change your hearts and strengthen you. He wants to raise you up to stand up like a mighty army. I pray that God finds someone here. That on that great day of graduation, God, I pray that I at the end, I can sit back with the old ones. I say, that's one of, that's one of our students. Yeah. Hallelujah, who made it to the end. Oh, that when that day is gone and God called me home, I want to leave an army that don't compromise. Yeah. I want it to be known. You know where these folk come from? We all finna have church now. Yeah. Because they don't play. They don't play. You got a healing service coming up. Who, who, who's, 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 who, who's taking the healing service for the night? Oh, the first church or the apostolic second case of the Holy Cathedral or the most holy, your most highest church. Listen, get them in the for them. Yeah. Yeah. Got too many names. Get one of them four. <laughs> Come in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Why do you want to get them? Because they've been taught by a real apostle. They've been taught by a real apostle. Why have they taught? Not only preach Jesus, but they've been taught to demonstrate. Demonstrate. Yeah. Yeah. Now, as I told you, you're a real apostle. You are a real prophet. You are a real pastor teacher. You are a real evangelist. God never sent out a ministry without power. Yes. And here in Atlanta, I ain't talking about Grady Hospital either. I ain't talking about Medicaid. I'm talking Holy Ghost. Yes. The sick, what you calling me for? They call you a preacher. Of God. That's what I'm calling you. Gap filling. In the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost. Tell me not to hear me. Your life will take a complete turn when you put it in God's hands. Because He'll renew your mind. You'll begin to look at everything totally different. Your prayer will be God, use me where you want me to be. Wherever I'm at. If I'm in the right place, job, or whatever, then let me be used. Yes. You ask me, God, God, I want to be used. I said, he heard you. He heard you, and he told you just that. He's going to fix you up and make you and put you right where he wants you and have you to do just what he wants you to do and make you grow up and be a great pillar in the church of the living God, not just for us, but for the church worldwide. May God raise up real ministry, real servants, handy. Real young people that were filling the gap when all the world and the youth are going astray. May God raise up some young folks here that's in Christ to stay. Yes, Give a lot of hands for God.
one. And no crowd may often come. I ain't going nowhere. I'm Christ to stay. Be the lie. I ain't going nowhere. I am here to stay. I ain't going nowhere. I'm the Christ to stay. Precious God, we thank you. That a healing virtue, a virtue of encouragement, a virtue of strength, this is my prayer, move across the congregation where each and every one is. If you need a healing in your body, just raise your hands where you're at. I feel a virtue from the sole of your feet to the crown of your head. Be healed. You need a peace of mind. I speak peace. Be still. You need direction. Give your ways unto the Lord. He will establish a thought. Let understanding come forth. I feel the virtue. You need an open door to be opened. According to the will of God. Because he knows which door it is. God opened the right door. Give them the key of David. In the direction that they should go. And close that door that should not be opened. In Jesus name. Your Lord and Father. 